So how many routers I can place in one OSPF array, right? These kind of things I will talk about in OSPF frequent ask questions. But if I want to add as many routers as I want, as many link between the routers as I want in one OSPF area, then I am talking about scalability. Okay, so we always talk about multi-area design, right? But when we have lots of routers in one OSPF area, so we will have some flooding, right? And depends on the failure rate between the uh, routers, link failure, node failure, depends on the rate of this failure. We might have some problems on low-end devices if we have in the same OSPF area. So in order to reduce the flooding impact, we can have some something like multi-area OSPF design to provide scalability. But multi-area OSPF design is not the only thing for scalability, right? Today, hard hardware uh, guys, hundreds of OSPF routers can be placed in one OSPF area. In fact, on orhanergun.net, I talked about a prefix suppression feature, which I will talk about now. With prefix, prefix suppression feature, uh, an operator, service provider, they placed, I think, 200, 250. You can have even more routers in one OSPF area without even single, uh, sorry, without even multi array OSPF design. They are using single OSPF area, backbone array OSPF design. So, uh, as I said, OSPF multi area is not the only feature in OSPF scalability, and we will talk about now other things as well. But scalability, how we can basically place more routers, more links in OSPF area, uh, how we can have uh, less CPU, less memory usage on the routers. Uh, not only those, but also configuration wise, how we can have basically less configuration and in, for the operation, how we can reduce the configuration complexity etc so we will talk about them these all things goes to the scalability OSPF scalability when we talk about BGP we will mention other things like route reflector and other things how we can place more routers uh, how we can reduce the number of sessions here how we can place more routers in OSPF area how we can basically reduce the control plane load okay topology information etc uh, we will see now so one feature is OSPF Prefix suppression, okay? Uh, I mentioned in router LSA, type 1 LSA, each and every router in OSPF area, they create type 1 LSA and they identify their connected prefixes, their neighbors, and uh, between the neighbors, the uh, OSPF metric. So all this information is sent. And not only for basically con uh, point-to-point -point links between two routers, but also for loopback, but also for any other stop subnet. So, but for OSPF, for SPF algorithm, we don't need this IP information of the point-to-point -point link. Okay? It might be just unnumbered, but still OSPF basically can calculate the, uh, SPF can calculate the topology. So, with prefix suppression feature, we are removing IP address information from those point-to-point -point link. So two routers you have and connecting via one link and you assign on this side on router A, 192.168.0.1, another side, 192.168.0.2. You don't need those addresses. You can have loopback interfaces for many other reasons like BGP overlay, LDP, etc but you don't need this point-to-point -point address. And that's why uh, when you reduce this, uh, when you remove this information, IP address information on point-to-point -point link, and you remove from the routing table and link state database, uh, basically you have less information. And basically it is not only for scalability of the routing table and uh, your link state database, also for your troubleshooting it is good, right? Less information to deal with, Good for troubleshooting. If you can have, you can do the troubleshooting faster, which means high availability also increases because for the high availability in network design tools we talked about, what are the attributes? Mean time between failure and mean time to repair, right? Mean time between failure, not related with this, but mean time to repair related with troubleshooting time, right? How long it will take to repair the failure, so troubleshooting. Uh, if you reduce the time for troubleshooting, you increase the time for high availability. It is good. So that's why this prefix suppression feature is the important feature 
and uh, operators, they are using, by the way, this feature. Of course, if we are talking about just a couple routers, 5, 10, 20 routers, we shouldn't deal with, uh, with prefix suppression or multi-array OSPF design as well. We are talking now large scale, that's why scalability, large scale OSPF design, and this is one of the future. Also, uh, for full mesh topologies, okay? Let's say you, you connected 10 routers, uh, 10 data centers. In each data center, you have just two routers for high availability, right? Five data center, and you want to connect those five data centers uh, together, and you receive VPLS service. So 10 routers now will be in the same uh, OSPF area, and 10 routers now will be in full mesh topology if you are receiving uh, VPLS in that case. So what you can do, uh, you can basically with the OSPF, uh, you, there is a feature called database filter. Uh, it is very similar to mesh group. I will explain ISAS mesh group or you can jump just to ISAS mesh group and you can check that. But basically the idea is you will have two or three routers uh, which will do the flooding on behalf of other routers. So in full mesh topologies then, this database filter, uh, this feature provides uh, flooding reduction. So then it will also add extra scalability to full mesh networks, let's say, full mesh topologies. So even though with the prefix suppression and uh, this uh, the database filter in the full mesh topologies, still we might have some problems because number of routers in OSPF area, there are some limits. Uh, not maybe numerical limit, I cannot give you numerical number. You should place 50 routers maximum in one OSPF area, etc. I cannot say that. But uh, the problems comes with the um, router LSA size. We have link MTU, right? 1500. Uh, most of the time by default and you increase if you have some encapsulation, some VPN, uh, even in PLS at extra 4 byte for each label. So when you have link MTU size 1500 let's say and router LSA I think 24 byte for uh, each LSA and what's happening with each and every extra router inside the single OSPF area they will create router LSA and your router LSA size might be bigger than link MTU. When it's bigger than link MTU, yes, it can be fragmented. But problem is fragmentation. Because fragmentation creates CPU issues, so uh, device resources will be used more and other device also will do the reassembly, so they will basically put in an order. So it is not good. Fragmentation you should avoid as much as you can. That's why the idea with the number of routers in one OSPF area, number of routers in one OSPF area, uh, scalability limit, most of the time we talked about the router LSA size, okay? Just keep on, keep an eye on that. And because each additional link and subnets, as I said, will be added to the router LSA and you don't want to have redistribution. Also, we talked about some area types, right? Special area types like stop, totally stop, NSSA, total NSSA. I told you between those uh, backbone and non-backbone areas, there is no topology information exchange. So in one area, NSSA area, let's say, the routers in an NSSA area doesn't know the topology information of the area zero, which router is connected to which other router and metric information, etc. in the uh, area zero. So in that case, when you have this kind of special areas, there is no also some, some of the reachability information, I should say, some of the reachability information will not be exchanged. So in stop area, just as a stop area, but we don't have type four and type five, right? So uh, in that case, what you are doing, fault isolation. So in, if link or node failure inside the area zero or in the stop area, then this information will not be propagated between the areas. That's important. Uh, they will not have full SPF calculation in, inside the area if something happens in another area. Full SPF calculation versus uh, partial route calculation basically has different uh, impact on the resources, on the CPU and memory, okay?
So that's important. When you have full SPF, it will create more CPU. It will consume more CPU resources. That's why you want to avoid that one as well. If you have lots of routers, why you want to place in some routers, especially low-end routers, low resources routers inside the non-backbone area such as stop totally stop. So you want to avoid topology information and you want to send as less information as you can inside the, that stop area. So low end devices, when there is some problem inside the backbone area or any other non-backbone areas, they will not basically run full SPF, etc. They will just change the metric if there is a, a change in the topology, etc. But not full SPF calculation, which would create normally a lot of CPU resources on the low end routers and they might even crash. Look at this topology. We talked about area types, we talked about LSA types. Now we are talking that areas, different areas, basically used for the scalability, right? And low end routers we can place in non backbone area and we can make that non backbone area stop totally stop in SSA and we don't uh, need to send each and every prefixes from the backbone area, but just summarized, uh, maybe not type 4, type 5, not type 3, so on and so forth. But let's use all of our knowledge now and let's understand what's the problem with this uh, design, basically. Uh, I just intentionally created a problem, but let's understand what's happening, okay? So let me just explain what is this topology. We have area 10, 20 connected uh, at the top and in the middle we have backbone area and area 30. Uh, area 30 is connected to EIGRP domain. What I am saying at the right side, area 10 is regular area. Uh, that's why all the LSA types including type 3, 4, and 5 are allowed. So as you can see, type backbone area is sending uh, type 3, 4, 5. If it is normal area, regular area, so we are not talking about stop, totally stop in SSA, but just area 10, different than area 0, but just regular normal area, then yes, everything is allowed. Type 3, 4 and 5 from the backbone area would just uh, enter in area 10, right? But backbone areas, type 1 and type 2 LSA, how they will send, they will be sent to the area 10? They will not be sent, of course. Type 1 and type 2, those LSAs are special to the death area, but they are summarized into type 3 and sent to the area 10. That's why normally, of course, type 1 and type 2 of backbone area will go to the area 10 as type 3. Okay, and 4 and 5 uh, from the external uh, domain, they should uh, just come. They should come from external domain. So what are also we are saying, ABRs create type 4 LSA into an area 10. Why? Uh, for each and every type 5, we have also, not each and every type 5, sorry. For just ASBR reachability, we have type 4 LSA. This ABR creates this type 4 LSA and send into the area 10. Area 20, I am saying stop area. That's why only type 3 LSA is allowed. Is it true? So if area 20 is stop so we don't have basically they said area 20 stop so area 20 stop then type 4 and type 5 is not there and type 3 lsa from the backbone will be sent by the way even if you connect area 10 and area 20 routers directly they cannot send the lsa directly because those lsa need to come through area 10 area 0 sorry backbone area right so we know that directly they, they cannot communicate but they should communicate through uh, backbone area uh, what else? So, area 30. Is there a problem here? What I am showing here, EIGRP is sending as type 5 LSA. So, if EIGRP is sending type 5 LSA, then area 30 cannot be stop or totally stop. Right? Because in totally stop and stop, we cannot have type 5 LSA. Also, if it is type 5 LSA, it cannot be NSSA or total NSSA because we can do redistribution from EIGRP to area 30 with NSSA and total NSSA area. But those LSA would come as type 7. So since we are showing type 5 LSA, this area 30 should be normal area, regular area. But I am also showing from area 0 type 3 LSA only. If it is just regular area, normal area, why type 3 LSA only? 
and I didn't mention any filtering, etc. There is no filtering, etc. Right? Then why type 3 is only? That's the problem, right? If it is normal area, then it should be type 3, 4, and 5. Right? So far? So good. So either then in this problem in, with this topology, with this design, either I should say type 3, 4, 5 from backbone into area 30. So then it should be from the EIGIP type 5 LSA. Or if this is from the backbone type 3 LSA only, then probably here area 30 can be what? If type 3 LSA only, stop it can be. Or uh, it can be uh, an SSA. But if it is stop, then I cannot have from EIGRP type 5 LSA. I cannot have basic redistribution. That's why it cannot be stop. Can it be NSSA? Uh, type 3 LSA only NSSA? Yes, it can be, right? But in that case, EIGRP cannot send as type 5 LSA and I should change the LSA type from EIGRP from type 5 to type 7 LSA. So NSSA area, area 30 can be, but then in that case type 7 LSA I should show, or area 30 is regular normal area, and then in that case type 5 LSA can come from EIGRP, but from the backbone it should be type 3, 4 and 5, similar to area 10. So ABR has to have uh, two interfaces, uh, at least one of them, should be in area zero, I told you before. So even if you create loopback interface and place that loopback interface in area zero, makes that router ABR. But ABR, one of the interface of ABR, area border router, has to be in, has to be in the area zero backbone area, okay? That's the rule. And I am also showing you here a chart, again, summarizing the, which area allows which LSA types. You have to know this. Uh, by heart and uh, in, as I said, in many exams, in interviews, in real life, you have to know this. OSPF is very common in enterprise and service provider networks. I will show you in service provider and data center in this course, uh, the use cases of OSPF, they are very common. Uh, OSPF is very common in those networks, in those businesses, and you need to understand this backbone, uh, regular stop, total stop, and not, non, not so stubby areas. Very fast again, let me summarize. In backbone, everything is there, of course. In regular uh, normal area, uh, also all LSA types are allowed, but there is no topology information exchange. Okay, uh, reachability information is exchanged through type 3 LSA between the uh, backbone and normal regular area and stop area doesn't allow type 4 and 5 external prefixes totally stop in addition to basically uh, in addition to 4 and 5 it doesn't allow type 3 LSA as well uh, but when there is no type 3 when there is no inter area LSA inter area reachability information then how that totally stubby area routers reach uh, entire domain through default route, of course, and ABR sends the default route. ABR sends the default route as type 3 LSA. Only type 3 LSA in total stubby area is default route. Okay, that's why I'm saying default 3 there. And not so stubby NSSA area, we have 1, 2, 3, not 5. Okay, uh, we, we don't have also 4 here, uh, but we have type 7, so external LSAs is seen as type 7 redistributed LSAs, uh, redistributed prefix information is seen as type 7. And of course, the ABR, NSSA ABR, translates type 7 to 5, although I don't have topology for that, but there will be ABR in the uh, connecting NSSA area to the backbone area. That router will do the translation, will, uh, will receive the type 7 LSA from the NSSA area, and in order to send to backbone area, it will do the translation from 7 to 5. So in the backbone area and any other place in the network, those prefixes, redistributed prefixes, will be seen as 5, type 5, not 7. Only 7 inside the NSS area.